I wrote my story on him, and I think it had really been written on Roseworth before. It's like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, one, I'm thinking about doing a story on this guy who does these things on the street. There was something really mysterious and fun about what he was doing. My first reaction on seeing his art was like, that's hilarious, and who did that? I was kind of intrigued by them at first because they were so slick and so well done and so clever. I just presumed that it was a grant that somebody got with the city's permission. I thought, wow, here it is again. Montreal is being innovative. Isn't this different? Who at City Hall do we, do we have to thank for this? I sort of assumed that it was one of the projects going on. I'm not aware of all the projects that, that go through. I like images that I can draw easily. Sort of inspired by the language of the street, if you will. Talking about literally the language that the city uses to paint the street with. Technical, functional, clear. I mean, I want people to think that maybe, just maybe the city decided they should put an on switch in a parking lot. And then I'll let people decide why the city might want to do such a thing. Was there something that, that got you going? Definitely. Candy, Goldsworthy. So what he does is he just arranges elements of nature in a very imaginative, appealing, and unique way. It's beautiful what he does. He's basically a kid who's been playing outdoors since he was young and, and never really stopped. Playing with twigs, playing with leaves, building little universes based on his imagination. And that's kind of what appeals to me. I was kind of thinking about how to duplicate the excitement I experienced when looking at his work and somehow translating that in an urban setting. I thought about it quite a bit, but like many ideas we all have, I never really acted upon them.
But then September 11th happened. That period was memorable for me because there was an undeniable atmosphere, a fearful atmosphere everywhere. I guess it instilled in me a feeling of like now's the time to say something. I wanted to do something artistically as well, so I did. I figured I'm going to go and paint bikes around the city and educate Montrealers, at least, my world. He'd never done anything illegal. He was the straight kid in the bunch, right? We used to tease him. He was a straight Montgomery, we'd call him. Maybe unfairly, we would laugh at his pieces because we, we thought he was pulling all his icons out of his mom's sewing kit. We got the zipper, we got the, we got the scissors. The concepts were good. At first I was like, uh, this guy that I know from high school that I had no idea that was, you know, artistic, visually at least. He was doing it with a stencil and a brush and I'm like, dude, you got to get a spray can so it's sharp. One thing that was funny is that one of the first things he said was, I'm not an artist, like, I just kind of do these things, like, for fun. He talked about counterculture, about cars invading the city, about magazines like Adbusters, and wanting to do something like a vigilante kind of thing to reclaim public space. And there were a lot of ideas like that floating around, but it was also, you could tell, he wasn't quite clear on it. He was, like, trying to, to formulate it and put his finger on it. Does your mother know you do this? Actually, yeah, she's one of my biggest fans. Albeit a concerned fan. I don't think Vandal was at the top of her list. <laughs> it's kind of hard for her to explain to her friends. Well, her other option is saying that I'm a waiter. Basically, I'm watching an attack on the street, and everybody's welcome. I had this momentum going. I was almost addicted. I was like a gambler, like knowing you're, you're really pushing your luck, but you can't help it. He already knew that they were on his tail. He'd start seeing them at spots, right? So they were onto him, and, and we told him, look, now's the time to chill out, right? À 4 heures du matin, Peter Gibson est pris en flagrant délit. C'est bon, bah, aérosol à la main. CJAD 800. Uh, the city nailed Rodsworth, and uh, he could be facing as much as 100 grand in fines. 85 charges of public mischief. The uh, problem is, of course, he paints on city property, not his own, and, and you can't do that kind of thing, no matter how interesting or artistic it is. It motivated me right off because of these 51 charges and it seemed like a, a very serious investigation. A lot of police officers involved. A seizure was done at Mr. Gibson's uh, apartment of his computer, his camera, a lot of stencils, uh, paint cans. 
the fact that they managed to identify so many sites to the same artist, I think, is part of why they made such a, an important investigation in this case. It's easy for you to have you know, thought back on it and then second guess yourself. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. When you were doing that, did you yeah. have in mind that you were putting the safety of an uh, individual in well, the party? I, did it ever cross your mind? To be honest, I didn't until I actually did this one and I kind of regretted it. What's important for us is to put yourself back where you were when you did that. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are a lot of reasons that why I did it. Some of them are personal, personal, and some of them, you know, perhaps seem less acceptable than, than others. But I mean, I, I mean I'm not. I, I definitely don't feel like I had any criminal intent at any point. You did uh, do it before, and you got a ticket for it, and, and that's it. That establishes that you knew it was illegal. I never felt immoral about it, or I never felt. Mm -hmm. I was sort of justified it somehow in my mind, anyway. Right. When I got arrested, it was like my life was sort of turned inside out to a certain extent. I feel like I was leading a bit of a secret life before that. I think part of me didn't really have the courage to reveal that side of myself to anyone. But at the same time, I had a desire to reveal that. So it almost forced this, it almost forced this kind of opening up. He really created something that people appreciated. I mean, they generally appreciated, they understood it. It was exciting and it was fun. And then, oh, all of a sudden, it's like, this guy's bad? No, he can't be bad. It wasn't just regular people, it was also people from arts institutions that kind of stepped into it. More than a thousand people have now signed an online petition in support of the artist. Chose que je ne fais pas habituellement, mais je trouvais que là, ça dépassait les bornes. J'ai décidé d'écrire une lettre au maire de Montréal. Je l'avais envoyée aussi euh, au journaliste du Devoir, simplement pour lui signifier que son article m'avait fait réagir. Et puis, euh, comme je me, je me considère assez impliqué culturellement à Montréal, qu'il sache que ça m'avait interpellé et puis que voilà, je réagissais. Chris Hand is supporting Gibson, and he's also started a letter-writing campaign to the mayor of Montreal. I don't want to live in a city or a country or a world where artists are being threatened to be thrown in jail for doing their art. The Gazette and a lot of the French papers right away were like, what's going to happen? Like, this guy who's doing good, fun art is potentially facing some very stiff repercussions. CJ80 time is 439. The issue uh, I'd like your opinions on today is public mischief. How do you feel about that? 7900991. I decided to do a to do a topic on my show about Rhodesworth uh, because I seemed to think that it was getting confused in something else that we had been talking about in other topics, and that, and that was the the tagging that goes on in the city, the anger that comes as a result of some of that, uh, the cost to some of the people that have uh, suffered that kind of graffiti on their buildings, on their property. And I could see pretty quickly that this wasn't the same thing. And it all happens at a time the city is investing a million dollars cleaning up the streets of graffiti. And what we're saying is that this is our territory. This city belongs to the citizens of Montreal and not to graffiti and taggers. City property or private property should not be used as an artist's canvas. I don't care what anybody thinks, because I have to pay for that in the end. I'm a taxpayer. I love the city of Montreal, and if he's such a good artist, give him a canvas to paint. For now, regret is not the foremost feeling on my mind. In the past two weeks, I've been thinking, man, what the fuck, you know, how stupid, et cetera, et cetera. But at the same time, it's raising questions that I guess I wanted to raise. That's what the whole artistic process is about. It's about exploration. It's about questioning. I knew what the consequences were, and I took that risk, and here I am. I'm facing those consequences.
actually just ask you, mm -hmm. how serious are the charges? I mean, how much money or jail time possibilities? If he was found guilty of these charges, the more important consequence for him will be to have a criminal record. I mean, in the world that we live today, uh, having a criminal record is very limiting. For the city, the problem of graffiti has been bothersome for a long time. And they decided that Mr. Gibson's uh, art on the street would be a, a, a grouped with these graffiti artists. So it, to them, this is one issue. I think we have a problem when it comes to art in public places. We haven't figured out how to do it properly in Canada. You know, who's going to make the distinction? Is the city going to hire a curator to decide which one of these people get haul, gets hauled into jail? Are we willing to, to say that somebody who's done that should have a criminal record, should have thousands of dollars to pay, to repay to the city? Not sure. The funniest thing is just nobody knew what to do with him, you know? Like, the city didn't know what to do. Uh, people seeing the art didn't know what to do. Like, nobody was reacting to it in the way you would react to graffiti. His arrest ultimately did have a positive value because it, it actually politicized space. It really brought to the fore the idea of, um, you know, who controls space and for whose benefit. It's not my land, and I, I just see it as our land. Like, you know, I think I have a native belief about that kind of thing. It's, um, you know, it's, it's you, you don't own anything. And I've got such a powerful drive to form art that I find is beautiful that I just look for a space to do it in. All the, the rules and regulations and stuff and that, that's not my stuff. I don't, I don't pay attention to it until I get into trouble. trying to take a picture of this. With the trial pending, I've been sort of keeping busy with little contracts here and there. Album cover, uh, t-shirts, stuff like that. Okay, I'm going in. I don't think we've really resolved as a society or as a community what the role of public space is exactly and, and who has a right to it and what kind of imagery and what kind of message goes into that public space. Whether you think it's enhancing the city or not, I think there, there's enough crap that's diminishing the city, in my opinion, and diminishing city life, that I feel completely justified in what I did, at least morally. This could make a pretty wicked collage, actually. When I first started doing billboards, I had a crew of artists and our, our concept was we were giving ourselves art shows because we had not been allowed into the art world. Rosworth reminds me of myself when I was young. I wasn't real until I got arrested because I think a lot of people do this and don't really understand what the consequences are. And I felt like once I crossed the line and, and was involved in the actual consequences of my actions, that showed the world that I'm really committed. You know, just as people need to eat, just as people need to have shelter, people need to have, you know, creative expression, and, and society should accommodate that.
Peter Gibson will be shutting down this street next Monday and drawing his own bicycle path. That same city has given him a permit to shut down the street and draw all night. Au début, j'ai demandé comme une autorisation pour faire une piste cyclable artistique. Là, ça a été refusé parce qu'on n'a pas le droit de faire la signalisation. C'est un monopole de la ville. Tu peux pas comme changer quoi. Ok, alors là je suis retournée en arrière, j'ai dit ok, on va faire installation d'œuvres d'art temporaires. Et là ils ont accepté, mais quand j'ai envoyé les images, quand même, à un moment donné on m'a dit est-ce que c'est l'artiste qui a été déjà comme arrêté pour euh, avoir fait des, des pochoirs dans la rue Et, euh, et là je dis oui, je pense que oui. Dans un premier temps, il a été refusé. Parce que, puis là, ça a fait toute une histoire. Et puis, euh, ah, la Ville n'aime pas les installations temporaires. Mais on peut faire, si on appelle ce marquage au sol, si on l'appelle une installation temporaire dans l'espace public, là, on peut l'autoriser. Tu sais, quand je vous dis, nous autres, on essaie de trouver avec les artistes par quelle voie on va passer pour qu'on ait un oui. OK. Thank you. Bon, c'est vrai que des fois, je me disais, est-ce que c'est bien, qu'est-ce qu'on fait, tu on essaye de le mettre dans un contexte plus euh, autorisé, puis je pense que les, le, le graffiti art, la beauté, c'est que c'est sauvage, quoi. Si tu mets ça dans une galerie, c'est comme, es, esthétiquement, c'est beau, mais il n'y a, a plus la dimension sociale qui va avec. kind of thinking about linking up with the surroundings, uh, incorporating them somehow into the bike path, being sensitive to the buildings, the history of the area. It's crazy to be doing this and not even, not worrying about, not looking over your shoulder and almost hoping a cop comes by so I can flash my permit. Je pense que pour lui c'est bien parce que ça affirme ça lui donne confiance. Justement, ça le coupe un peu de son statut de illégal. Puis je pense qu'un artiste qui a beaucoup besoin pour continuer à avancer, c'est d'avoir confiance en lui. Donc c'est une façon de reconnaître son travail, de lui donner confiance pour peut-être qu'il passe à quelque chose d'autre aussi, mais que pour lui donner la force. Quoi. A lot of people are getting to know that name, Rhodesworth. I mean, within the city, uh -huh. he's getting to be quite well known. What about outside of the city? The largest uh, street art website in the world is Worcester Collective, and they basically were all over his case back in July, and so he is well known internationally. We did, um, a while back, put up uh, photographs of what he was doing in Canada, and it was amazing because more than uh, most artists, the response was incredible. He immediately connected with people. He became an artist artist. You know, artists who've been doing this for years looked up to him because of the creativity. Who's your favorite artist? At the end of the year, we asked that question all the time, and he suddenly became, you know, everybody started saying Rhodes. <laughs> Up next, one man's journey. No, no, hey, I've done this. Trust me, this is done this a million times. Can I get my double? Actually, I have a double for these shots. Alan, peinture en direct, exclusivement manche à vie. It's been a bit of an ego trip to a certain extent. One of the reasons, like I guess, artists do crave attention is because there's an actual relationship between the amount of attention you get, probably, and the amount of work you get. 
doing an album cover, getting invited to go to Europe would never have happened probably without such attention. So if all the publicity press will facilitate that, then great. I guess uh, I'm going to have to start getting used to the fact that I'm now an international artist, international star. Even though nobody else knows that, but I know it. And you know it. <laughs> It was the first thing they told me when I got off the bus. Are you Peter Gibson? Oui, on a un camion pour toi. A truck. Mais un camion, c'est comme tu n'en as jamais. Ah ouais, ça c'est génial. Tu vas le perdre, le camion. On a un camion pour toi, mon gars. That's your car? This truck? Yeah. Ouais. Here I was trying to be the anti-car spokesperson, and what do I do if I find myself designing, you know, designing cars and trucks and shit? The irony. Okay, and then I guess this turn as far as getting materials and stuff. We'll do that We're gonna manage this tomorrow. tomorrow. Or, yeah. 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 Okay. I think they already have most of whatever you need here. Really? Yeah. Sounds good. Is it? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, last question. Is there any where can we get free food? <laughs> I just talked to Sandra and she's like, you gotta start, you gotta do it this weekend, you gotta do it now, tonight, tomorrow, you gotta start painting stuff. I don't know, what am I taking a picture of? Parking lot. I've gotta come up with a concept, man. I got nothing. Nobody said I had to think. Well, here we are at uh, Off Cool headquarters. You have to speak French with me. Okay, it's about fun program. Okay, regarde, je vais te montrer vite. Okay. Vous, votre univers, c'est tout ça. Tout ça. Si tu as envie de peindre toute la route en rose, tu peins toute la route en rose. Okay. On est d'accord, pas des trucs trop destroy pour les mômes ou des scènes de cul à chier. Enfin, tu vois, ah, non, ouais. tu vois ce que je veux dire ouais. Dans, dans la yeah, limite du raisonnable. Okay. Et après, j'ai de manière tacite. J'ai de manière tacite un genre d'autorisation pour que tu puisses aller faire quelques conneries où ça te branche en ville. Faut avoir permission, il faut le. Non, faut que tu le fasses comme tu le fais à Montréal, c'est-à-dire euh, si t'en fais deux, trois, personne ne dira rien. Par contre, si au moment où tu le fais, t'as un flic qui te tombe dessus, c'est ton problème, c'est pas le mien. Ah ouais Voilà. Ok, donc j'ai pas vraiment autorisation. Une fois que c'est fait, c'est fait. Ok, mais si un flic tombe dessus, Au moment où tu le fais. Ça sera plus compliqué à gérer. Ah ouais? Voilà. Ok. Là-dedans, t'as de la bouine? Honnêtement, ça va pas durer longtemps. Ok, non, 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 mais. Juste pour. Euh... Ok, mais de la bombe, j'en ai pas okay. beaucoup. Hein. Tu vois, le pinceau, ça te fait chier en fait. Non, je... ben en fait, honnêtement, j'ai beaucoup moins d'expérience. Donc il faut trouver de la bombe. Augustin, où est-ce qu'on achète de la bombe à peinture pour les taggers? Il y a une question. Curveballs, man. That's what it's all about. What do I look like an artist? I think I can just paint freely with a brush. What is it? I like how the guy's like, yeah, you can go whatever you want in the city, but if you get caught by a cop, uh, there's nothing I can do. What kind of carte blanche is that, man? Okay, here 
that's one and a half up there. It was two and a half. What the hell is going on? <laughs> I'm telling you, the French are unreliable. The proof is in their road markings. I'm trying to find the essence, if you will, of what it is that makes Trouville Trouville. So far, I've come up with fish, French fries and mussels, martini umbrellas, French windows, good coffee. I'm trying to think how those all fit together. There's something deep in there. I'm just not sure what it is. Those are big ones, huh? That's big. Daddy. song and dance, you know, basically earn my keep. Fucked! They've been treating us like kings so far, so I guess at some point you have to suffer. That's why I'm here. They didn't invite me here to uh, take a vacation, so... I can't really complain. I want it to be good, you know? There's always that pressure. In the past, I've always had, you know, but did, did things more or less on my own time, and I had, there wasn't that sense of deadline that I'm starting to feel here. This is a lonely process. Time to hit the streets. Okay, just turn it off then. Laying down those first few stencils was pretty tough. I guess my strength is working with elements that are already there, but there were no lines to work with. The space was pretty chaotic. There was another installation happening. There was scaffolding leaned up against the building, and it was just pretty chaotic. I have a hard time keeping a straight face sometimes when people are trying to engage me in a deep conversation about stencil art. I even have a hard time saying the word art. I feel this is closer to cartoons than it is to high art. I 
I don't really have a lot to say. I've never read Heidegger or uh, Kant. Being invited to vandalize a town is a surreal concept, especially when I'm being pursued in my hometown. Well, there's obviously the concern about the, the authorities. It's, it's not very clear where I'm allowed to go and where I'm not allowed to go. But uh, I guess we'll find out soon enough. I sort of feel like I've gotten to a point where I've sort of developed this formula almost. It's, it's almost formulaic. I kind of feel like I want to take it to the next level. I'm just not sure what that next level is. <laughs> Junctions 22 and 4. It's an absolute nightmare out here. Ashford is a town that, for the last 30 years, has been surrounded by this ring road, this four lane ring road. And it's basically starved the town of, of oxygen. It's, it's not allowed people in the outskirts to come in, it's not allowed people to stop there. So, slowly over the 30 years, it's been drawing the energy from the town. In the next few years, they're completely changing this and they're going to make the ring road into a shared space, which is a, originally a Dutch concept, um, where the hierarchy of the street is completely taken away and pedestrians have equal value on the street to drivers. I have curated 11 artists from around the world to come and make pieces in Ashford. The kind of people that I've tried to curate, their practice is built into the whole ethos of the streets. I mean, people like Rosworth, as an avid cyclist, believe strongly in public space, and they identified with what the road engineers were doing here. I, I think there's only very rare times when you find, like, a big authority is actually implementing something in the city that people like myself, who walk from a kind of activist point of view can believe in. So I think street art is saying this kind of environment can be a visual space. People can come for nothing and experience art. You don't need to pay to go into a gallery. You can't invest in it. It's ephemeral in its nature, you know, what are you going to do, cut out a bit of street and pull it away with you? It's important to me to really be able to reach, like, everybody. I want to reach the guy who's like, I'm not going to go in that gallery because the guy working at the desk's shoes cost more than I make in a week. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want it to be reachable to the guy who's just walking down the street.
that a lot of the artists don't have a lot of money, and they're putting a lot of money into their pieces that could disappear in 30 minutes, and you see this amazing dedication to the street. I think the interesting aspect about street art is that the walk is always political just by the fact that it's put on the street. It doesn't matter what it is. It's run in parallel with um, direct activism, you know, that you don't necessarily lobby a political party, but you actually directly take action, you know. You're not making a painting on a wall in a gallery that critiques the way cities work. What you're doing is you're actually making those cycle lanes directly. Well, they aren't enough, let's just do it straight away, let's make them. So you're cutting out all the, the middlemen, the bureaucracy, and you're just cutting straight to the chase. I think that street art adds that component that makes it livable, that makes it democratic, that makes it ours. And you're not doing it through a rock through the window, you're doing it by tweaking the logo or by putting something in the corner that makes people look down at a little character on the corner of the sidewalk rather than looking at the big Starbucks on it. It balances the scales. I think people are trying to open up new channels of communication because everything's being shut down, everything's being gobbled up by a few people who want nothing but just, you know, raw power. We need another avenue to communicate with each other and, you know, what better than the streets? No matter how much there's a crackdown against, artists like Rhodesworth will always have graffiti and street arts. You can't eradicate it, no way. Well, there's one of these signs going up for each of the artists. So it's clear what's part of the program and what isn't. And also, for some people here, hopefully it makes it clear that it's art rather than an accident. You think they're like, oh, you got grease on your... You think? I would just like to very briefly welcome you here to Ashford. Um, we hope that you will enjoy the art that's here. All the pieces of art are intended to reflect either on the now dismantled Ring Road or on the Tour de France as it runs through the town at the weekend. critical areas over there and there. And considering this is where the piece will be happening, that's pretty well the whole area is critical, almost. I mean, yeah. motorcycles, they are looking, yeah. look, always conscious of road markings when they're wet. Yeah. It's always a big issue, so they're aware of the problem. Is there any way, Peter, that, that this kind of flop movement could widen and narrow? I, I, again, I mean, I, I wanted to come to this meeting before. I haven't completely yeah, solidified the idea that's in my head. That's, that's you know, so. Because if it was, if it could narrow towards the junction or the set centers to there, so you're actually creating yeah. gaps that aren't painted. Yeah, I could see that so. working quite nicely, that mm -hmm. sense of I mean, uh, a concentrated group and then a sure. spread, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, do that. When can we do that, do you think, is in terms of... Well, I could probably come up with something, you know, today. Butterflies. Well, I'm looking for birds. I'm just looking for pictures, really. Just something to reference when to draw. I don't know, maybe in some people's minds they've seen the zipper or whatever and they've seen that for the first time so they're like, okay, I want to be cool if, you know, or they're expecting something for me to do something, but they haven't, you know, been in my shoes. They haven't gone through and done all of these things themselves and put in the hours and 
you know. So, it, while well, maybe seem interesting and fresh to them, it's not really fresh or interesting to me. One, two, three. Four, five. When I first started, it was about wanting to express something, and there was a certain amount of indignation involved in that that desire. There's a certain amount of desire to sort of bring out some kind of feeling that I had that uh, the world or the society that I live in is in a certain state of denial. There's a certain amount of hypocrisy, and I felt this desire to really you know, to, uh, to point that out. That desire isn't as strong anymore, but I guess it's still there somehow. Ashford in Kent is in the middle of a renaissance, but the latest artistic addition to the town has been seen by many as a complete waste of space and money. Yeah, the birds, yeah, they're really for? pointless. Yeah. I don't even know what they're yeah, for. There's the no bed. point in them, they just yeah, the yellow bed on the floor. Ev everyone was looking at them and, and trying to like, see what oh, it was, yeah, and no it? one knew what it was. What do they do? Do you, eat, do you know what they do? <laughs> <laughs> it might look aesthetically pleasing to somebody who's uh, a bird lover or uh, an art lover, but then it's a distraction for a motorist, isn't it? And as it is, I'm getting old, so I don't need any distractions. I didn't really know what it was. I thought they'd made a mistake or they put them there temporarily just while they were working on the road. I studied art history and I cannot believe mm. that. I mean, £50,000 for that, it's a danger, isn't it? What do yes. you think? Let us know. Absolutely. Your news at ITV.com, I'm sure you've got an opinion on that. I'm going up to meet with a somebody from Kent, BBC Kent. Oh. Richard Cork. Hi, Richard. Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. Yeah. And um, how did you get the name? How did you dream up the name? Yeah. Well, it's sort of been inspired in part by uh, the artist Andy Goldsworthy. It's a really? Big uh, inspiration. Because Andy is much more country, really. Isn't Definitely. He? Yeah, yeah. He is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's not. Mm. He's not street, is he? No, no, no. It's not. Um, it's not readily apparent. A bit of uh, bit of Wordsworth as well in there. And yeah. It's got a sort of aristocratic ring to it, which I kind of like. And Whoa. Okay. It is to me, to, oh. to a Canadian boy, it sounds that way. So you're like Lord Wordsworth. Lord, yeah. That, that, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you can call me Lord. That's that. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I can call you Lord. Oh. Yeah, yeah. If you want. <laughs> You think you're a cut above all these graffiti? No, it wasn't that. wasn't really the idea. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit exactly. posh. Yeah, a little bit posh, yeah. Michael, you didn't warn me he was going to be posh in Eric the Crest. Oh, I didn't know. I've heard a part of the chat me all about it. <laughs> Are you interested in people's reaction to your work? Uh, Do you check that out or not? Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. starting to feel the tiredness of my own sure, responses. It's, uh, it's starting to. I don't know if it shows, but it's. it almost feels tired. I guess tiredness is a precursor to change sometimes. <laughs> you get tired of doing things a certain way.
How does it feel? Strangely, I feel ambivalent. Kind of like the first time I lost my virginity. A lot of fuss about not much. I don't particularly miss the rush of breaking the law. I miss the possibilities that exist in just doing stuff out in public, creating unexpected situations or potential surprises for the world when they wake up. Doing stuff on the street has a certain power. There's a certain audience, there's a certain impact that's created. That kind of impact will never exist in the context of an organized event or institutionalized event. I want to see what it feels like again and just sort of maybe remember why, why it is that I started doing it. Shark, man. I don't know, it's, it's a representation of my fears. It's all about confronting one's fears, you know? I'm a little nervous. In a new city. Um, just keep in mind that the cop cars aren't white. Yeah, they're green, they're right? Green they're green with the gray. with the green okay, spray. Because right. that has fucked me up a ton of times. Okay. Here it goes. I sometimes wonder why I'm doing this. What's to be gained by painting pictures on the street? Maybe my relationship to it was more pure, perhaps when I started doing this five or six years ago. But I guess I, I took a certain amount of pleasure or vicarious pleasure in the you know, the thought that somebody would see you, something that I've done, it would provoke a certain amount of surprise. And maybe that's still the case, but I guess because I've been thinking about it myself so much, it doesn't inspire the same kind of surprise in me. So therefore, I don't project that feeling onto the bystander.
Huh? Hi. Hi. How are you doing? I'm just painting the road. I'm, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. No, it's not loud, huh? It's going to be nice. You're going to like it. No, I hate it. I don't want really? it. Really? Yeah, really. Wait till you see it when it's finished. No, no, no. They're tulips. How can you not like tulips? Yeah, I'm in trouble, I know. You're really in trouble. I know, yeah, but that's, that's the chance I take. I'm just going to do this one, and then I won't do it anymore. No, you will. You well, will. not here. Not on your street, I won't. Watch, I'll show you what it's going to look like. You'll like it. I just got it. You don't like it? No. It's not finished yet. What's that? Yeah. More yellow? 30 seconds. Prince, you are being arrested. Is this your bike? Yes, it is. Hmm. Op the straat. Hot summer. Then I hope we'll see. What? That's where's the paint? Yeah. It's in bag. my bag, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Get in the car, please. Okay. Yeah, huh? yeah exactly. We're doing an art project. Yeah. yeah. lying on a hard slab. It's not much to do except contemplate your the errors of your ways. Seriously, two minutes earlier we would have been free. Wow. Now they're all watching us through the window. Let's get out of here. I would, I would take a shot right here, like this. At the last meeting, my lawyer recommended that I take photos of some of the pieces I've done around town to demonstrate their ephemeral quality. The fines I'm facing are to cover cleanup costs. If they really believe there is a safety hazard here, then why the city not do its job in, in you know, removing this, this threat? You know, if it's really such a threat. See, but that's kind of an example. There's some there, but you know yeah. that it's the rest gone, gone is gone. Yeah. So that was a, a zipper there. You can't, it's completely gone. We're trying to show that they didn't bother to clean anything up. That's the... Well, one point, and second point is to show what does it look like now. Right. They say that they're going to have to do a lot of work to clean it up. I want to say, well, clean what up? Clean what up? Look what it looks like. Are you right. really going to send people to clean that up? Right. It's by, by March, there's not going to be anything left. It's going to be the second winter. And we're not saying that what you did is not illegal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're just yeah, saying yeah. that it's not criminal. Right, right. A criminal act is one that is a uh, real destruction of property. So how could they have determined that what I did was criminal? Well, it's, it's because of criminal? the extent. Right. Yeah. That's why uh, Francine Lard and the experience of this summer are important. Because it shows that obviously this is not a criminal act since the city permits it. Right. When it is, when it goes through channels. Right, right, right. Ah, very good. I like that. Like, <laughs> you because with this, yeah. there, there cannot be yeah. any criminal act right. that can be permitted mm -hmm. Obviously, with, with, but with, with permission. permission, yeah, you can't get permission no. to kill somebody. To kill somebody or to well, steal. Uh, yeah, unless you're a soldier, you can. Um, I, we never really talked about this, but I guess I should, it's probably worth considering, though. Let's say, worst case scenario, I do, I am found guilty. Like, what, do you have any idea what, what kind of, you know, what I'm facing? Potential fine, uh, or 
combined with community service potentially too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. A point could be made to a judge that it would be abusive to give you 52 times right. a sentence if, if the judge determines it's a $200 fine per per, right. per charge. Then I mean, I see right. I know mm -hmm. it's not a ten thousand dollars. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot. No problem. So oh, we'll uh, see you Monday. Monday. Right now, I guess the big question in my mind is, to what point am I willing to back up what I've been doing on the streets of Montreal for the past two, three years? Do I treat this as a crusade, a defender of freedom of expression, or do I just try and get off as easily as possible? And I don't know. I don't know how much integrity I have. on today is Rosworth has his day in court. I'm okay with it. Police officer, unfortunately, that caught him at five o'clock in the morning with the spray paint and the stencils that he uses, had a different opinion of it, laid it on him. Big time. Just how public is a public space. Thanks for calling CJAD. Uh, hi, Rick. I'm going to have to, unfortunately, come out of, on the side against him. That's all right. Uh, and, and not because of what he does and, and that it's not attractive. The problem is, is not him, is that if we allow him to do it, uh, one person's art is another person's graffiti, and you just open the door for every schmo with a paint can to come out and do what he thinks is art, and next thing you know, we're, we got anarchy. Peter thinks it's a dangerous precedent then today. 7900991, how do you feel about it? I can't condone it. I'm sorry. I mean, it may be artistic and it might look good, but uh, I don't know. I have my doubts. I love his stuff. I've, I've seen it in several places, and it's very thought-provoking. And yes, it makes you laugh, and I just, I leave the guy alone. Hey, Cave. Thanks for coming through, man. Big star, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I brought my own media circus, man. Thank you very much for coming out. I'm sorry, I'm not going to be around. I showed up to court that morning expecting to have to defend myself in front of a judge. The next thing I know, my lawyer is taking me aside and explains to me that uh, the city of Montreal wants to make a deal with me. I had a choice on the table. Should I try and fight this and turn this into some kind of a crusade? My lawyer kind of urged me to accept the offer, suggesting that uh, if we were to fight it, it would be a long battle and by no means a uh, sure victory. In the public eye, there was huge public support for him, but the city was stuck. Once they arrested him, they can't really backpedal at that point. And is the city going to like go by the book or are they going to loosen up and recognize that you know we have, we have some really good art on our hands? Well, it was pretty cordial in there. I was, you know, shaking the hand of the the prosecuting attorney. Got a, I got a good luck from the inspector. Pleaded guilty to five charges, and as a result, I am absolved. I have no criminal record. I have to be on my best behavior for 18 months. I guess, uh, hey, I sold out. What can I say? <laughs> and it feels great. Uh, he has to do 40 hours of community service. He can't touch stencils and spray paint unless ordered by the city. Yeah. So basically, they punish him by making him do artwork for the city. Ooh. I think that the city didn't want this to become uh, this crusade against uh, an artist uh, you know, trying to, uh, uh, in part, to make the city more beautiful. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. No fines. No fines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty good. Couldn't hope for better, more than that, that's for sure. This is my, this is my career right here.
Qu'est-ce que tu fais avec ça? Je peins l'asphalte. Tu peins l'asphalte? Ouais. Tu fais des, des, des dingues sur l'asphalte? C'est ça. Où ça? Partout, dans la ville, dans les stationnements. Sur des chemins. Ah, c'est toi qui fais le hibou tout seul sur la piste? Ouais, c'est moi, ouais. Ah, oh, yeah! <rire> Comment ça va? Ça va bien, ça va bien. Et là, tu vois l'évidence. CJAD time is 6.39. In 2004, after years of beautifying the plateau in his own way, Rhodesworth was arrested. Now the Ville-Marie borough, in a twist of irony, wants Rhodesworth to paint the Palais des Congrès. Peter Gibson joins me. Hello, Peter. Hi. I want to refer to you as Rhodesworth. You've earned that, in, in my opinion, at least as an artist. Okay, no problem. Do you feel there's a little twist of irony in this again, that you've uh, that uh, you've been contracted to paint at the Palais de Congrès? I mean, the mayor doesn't just throw that area around very much. They're very proud of that, and they've included you. Yeah, definitely appreciate the irony in the situation, but um, I'm quite honored is, is maybe the, the word. Saw the article. What was it? Uh, was the, the they said uh, from uh, from Vandal to Foxy and Air. You feel like you've sold out at all? Uh, no, I don't actually. I don't. I don't feel that way. Um, I sold out a long time ago. I got it over with, man. Sell out. What the hell am I gonna do? I'm gonna keep breaking the law? Like that would be just stupid. It doesn't bother me that much because I feel comfortable enough in what I'm doing. And again, the whole issue of selling out, I'm not even sure what that means, but I think it's a very personal thing. I think you, you know when you're compromising your principles or you're compromising something about yourself. I think we all know it. Now, is it different working for the city or doing a contract with someone than you know, painting illegally on the streets? And of course it's different, but I personally like the difference. I kind of enjoy the opportunity to work in a different way and to deal with different issues and to deal with different problems. I guess part of it was that he didn't know if he wanted to do it or not. He wasn't, do I want to be a, a real a visual artist? Do I want to get paid for this? Am I? selling out if I do this. Maybe it was this private expression that all of a sudden has this commercial professional element that he maybe never envisioned. But on the other hand, you know, he's kind of been able to learn on his terms. Interesting thing about street art is that people think because you're breaking a law, you're taking this huge risk. And you are taking a risk. I feel personally, even though I'm not breaking the law, every time I do a commission, I feel the same adrenaline rush and the same sort of element of danger that I would when going out. You know, there's always the risk that you'll fail. I think the thing with Rhodesworth is that you realize how lemless the imagination is and, and how that weird spark you know, appears in somebody else, like 20 years later. And it's it's just vibrant, and he does things I, I never would even thought of doing, you know? It's amazing. One revelation is I think that things happen when you take risks. <laughs> 